Hi. Now in this video what I want to do is show you how we can use proof by mathematical induction to do divisibility or multiple tests. We've got an example here where we've got to show that 3 to the power 2n minus 1 is divisible by 8 for all positive integers n. We could also say that show that 3 to the power 2n minus 1 is a multiple of 8 for all positive integers. It's the same kind of proof that we're going to use. So what is this proof? Well, like all induction problems, we have to show that it's true when n equals 1. Then we assume it's true for n equals some value, say k, and go on to prove that it's true for n equals k plus 1. And on that basis, if it's true for n equals 1, it'll be true for n equals 2, 3, 4, and so on. But when we're doing these divisibility tests, we have to handle them in a slightly different way to what we've done before. I'll show you. What we tend to do is define a function. In this case, let's say f of n be that function, which is equal to the expression you've got here. So 3 to the power 2n minus the 1. So we need to check out, first of all, that it holds when n equals 1. So we'll just say f of 1. What does it equal? It's going to equal 3 to the power 2 minus 1. In other words, 9 minus 1, which equals 8. So clearly, f of 1, when n equals 1, it's divisible by 8. So we can say, therefore, true when n equals 1. Now we go on to assume that it's true. OK, we'll just say assume true for n equals some positive integer. Let's say it is k. So we know that, therefore, f of k which will be equal to 3 to the power 2k minus 1. We know that that, or assume it's divisible by 8. OK, divisible by 8. Now on this basis, we are going to consider when n equals k plus 1. We've got to show that this is going to then be divisible by 8. Now I said this was slightly different to what we've done in the past. When we're doing these divisibility tests or multiple tests, what we always look at is f of k plus 1 minus f of k. All right? And what I'm going to do now is substitute for what f of k plus 1 would be. So that would be replacing the n here then with k plus 1. So we're going to get 3 to the power 2, lots of k plus 1. And then that's minus 1. And then we've got minus f of k. So that's going to be minus 3 to the 2k minus 1. So I'll put that in brackets though, minus 3 to the power 2k minus 1. Now let's just tidy this up. What we've got here, if we were to expand the brackets, is 3 to the power 2k plus 2. And then we've got minus 1 here, and then minus 3 to the power 2k, and then plus 1. And then if we continue down here, let's just write this out again. We therefore have f of k plus 1 minus f of k equals, right, now the minus 1 and the 1, that cancels out. But here, when we're adding the powers, it's the same as doing 3 squared multiplied by 3 to the power 2k. 3 squared then multiplied by 3 to the power 2k. And then we've got this term here, minus 3 to the power 2k. 
Well, 3 squared is 9, so we've got 9 lots of 3 to the 2k minus 1 lot of 3 to the 2k. So in other words, we've got 8 lots of 3 to the power 2k. Now at this stage, we always add the f of k to both sides, leaving us with f of k plus 1. So we've got 8 multiplied by 3 to the power 2k, and then plus f of k. Now we can see that f of k plus 1 must be divisible by 8, because We've got two terms here. This term, f of k, is divisible by 8. We made that assumption. And this term here is divisible by 8 because you've got 3 to the power 2k. k being an integer means that this is an integer and it's multiplied by 8. So this term is divisible by 8. We've now got both terms divisible by 8. So f of k plus 1 must be divisible by 8. So we can say that since both terms okay, are divisible by 8, just write that in, divisible by 8, okay, then f of k plus 1 must be divisible by 8. Right, now we can see that if it's true, okay, if true for n equals some value, k, then we've just proved that it's true for n equals k plus 1. And so we now know that it's true, I can write here, since true for n equals 1, we prove that in the first instance up here, then it must be true for n equals 2. And if true for n equals 2, it must be true for 3, and if it's true for 3, 4, and so on. So in fact, it's therefore true for all positive integers, okay? of n. So you write that as n is a member of the positive integer set. Okay, so I hope that's given you an idea then how we can go about types of questions like this where we've got to show that they're divisible or they're multiples of a particular number. We always tend to go down to this idea of looking at f of k plus 1 minus f of k. Work it out, then add f of k to both sides and then investigate what you've got, okay? In this case, each term being divisible by 8. Okay.